Hey, hey. Well, hello. Welcome to the uh, Panic Election Addiction. addiction. The or, Panic Edition, yeah. Or addiction. The Panic Election Addiction. Yeah, it's been a really nerve-wracking day. Yeah. My spine feels like a broken xylophone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, you know, in light of the fact that it is um, the um, election edition, uh, and we might have a new president soon. Yeah. Please, please, please God. I have a question, which um, I want you to answer, if you okay. can. I will do my... Who's that? What's happening there? Wow, you got me there, didn't you? Who's that? What's what's happening? <laughs> um, what's happening there? Yeah, Who are those that two it, people? That's, that's, that's me. That's your brother uh, tattooing Joe Biden. That is just nuts to me that you will have like been hanging out yeah i, I was that was a, that was a, that was an amazing a, a, a crazy day um it was a job i wasn't actually tattooing him i was pretending to it was a it was um something for um big journalist dinner you know the yeah. correspondence dinner yeah and julia julia louis dreyfus was this the host that year and was in a bunch of videos that they were shooting outside the event. And so I, I got cast in it because I have ta tattoos. My cat's about to jump through this. So, whoa, well done. Come on, buddy. There you go. All right. Um, um, and uh, and uh, so, yeah, I flew down to DC and got to uh, meet um, uh, Vice President Biden. Hopefully, Hopefully tonight, later, we'll call him something else. Yes, please. Um, I, tell I, I you know I say I say that primarily because you know I mean yeah I'm I, I, I that's that's uh, how I'm how I'm going but I also I like the guy I mean I met him and I got to hang out with him person I've never I mean he's the only guy like that I've ever come close to meeting. You don't like travel in those circles down. No, oddly enough, enough, no. Yeah, I don't I, hang out in Georgetown or go to those. Uh, we're gonna post the uh, the link to that video in the in the description oh, cool. of this episode, so people can go watch it. But I tell this story frequently. I I get people to watch it because I think it's you're wonderful in it, and it's very funny. The whole thing is very it's funny. pretty funny. I got to meet Nancy Pelosi also. She got a tattoo. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But the way I but I tell the story about hanging. You know calling you up and saying, hey, you want to have lunch at Nueva Rampa next next week, which, you know, which for people who don't know was a great Chino Latino place down on 14th Street that you and I like to go for lunch. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, all the wall. Yeah. Um, and you said, oh, I, I can't. I'm, I'm going out of town. And I said, oh, yeah? For <laughs> what? I, I got a job. What is it? I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean you can't tell me? Yeah. I can't tell you. Yeah. Well, I'll, be, I'll be gone for a couple of days. Well, where, <laughs> where are you going? I can't tell I you. I can't tell you. Yeah. Why, why can't you tell me? <laughs> I can't tell because you. I can't tell you. <laughs> and it, it was the only great. only time in my life I was ever that. Three days. He's but, like, yeah. my, brother's with, my brother's with the CIA now. He's going out of town. Wow. He can't. I tell you, you want to have a good feeling, uh, and that is uh, to get to be allowed to work with somebody of that stature, who is surrounded by the toughest Secret Service policemen you've ever and women you've ever seen. Yeah, who don't like you personally at all. They don't want to see you anywhere near it, that man. No, no, because you have tattoos. Yeah, I mean, especially me. But basically, nobody's okay. <laughs> the idea that that I could have cleared, you know, that I cleared the hoop that that even with my my shenanigans of the past and my sordid history that I, I you know, that the that that Biden was like, no, I, he's OK. We, he's OK. Clear him. He'll bring him in. I felt really I felt good about myself. That's awesome. Yeah. And That's he was, you know, honestly, just the nicest guy. He was incredibly just like, you know. 
I mean, not like, you know, it wasn't like, it wasn't like hanging out in the den with, with your, with your uncle. He was like respectable, very well, you know, very, had a lot of energy. He's a good guy. Very, very kind of like. I know. imagine he's very much like you would expect him to be from what you see. Of I him. felt like that. I felt like it was who I saw on, on television. It was who I'd seen in interviews. He was behaved the same way with me. Um, He's like the, he was like hanging out with like great like a like the principal of a high school like the greatest principal of a high school <laughs> ever. Ah, that's so great! You know? oh, I love it. I love that you got to do that. Yeah, me too. It was it was really it was special, man. It was a really neat neat thing. You you uh, I, I, apparently you have some news about uh, a nickname. Do you have a new oh, name? Did you? Yeah, like, I was I was uh, I was showing mom how to to use her i got her a, a a google mini you know to play w q x r in the i actually don't know what that is but i, I... It, a google mini is a thing that we have decided uh that many americans put in their home now so that the national security administration can listen to everything that we oh, say that yeah oh i know but in addition that. to allowing the nsa to listen to everything we say it will play music and answer questions for you okay and I was showing mom, how, you know, no, just just tell it. You can talk to it from across the room. Just say, play QXR. Right. You have to say, hey, and then the name of it, which I'm not going to do right now. Otherwise, the one that I have It'll in start. the room will start doing yeah. that thing. But you say, hey, Flabbe, um, play this, and it will do that. And I said, and it'll do other things. And I said, hey, and I, and I said, hey, Blah, Blah, tell me a joke. And it told a joke. And then after telling the joke, it said, I said, hey, Vinny, what's your name? And she said, I am the Google Assistant. Um, or you can call me the Google Assistant. Would you like me to come up with a nickname for you? And I said, sure. And she said, do you want a short one or a fancy one? And I said, I'd like a fancy one. And <laughs> she said, okay, how about... Captain Comet Mysterio. And so I decided I like that Captain Comet Mysterio. And that's how I would like people to refer to me uh, from oh, now. I kind of I kind of like that name actually. <laughs> Captain I'm surprised. Comet Mysterio. And I mean AI came up with something really good there. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's not so to be feared. I heard, you know. Apparently, this was a few years ago. I'm sh I'm sure things may have changed, um, but uh, when when they were teaching a AI computers and AI in intelligence um, about the internet and how and and one of the tools they'd use to teach them would be to show them videos of of things that we do as people so that they could mimic us. These are the little baby AIs before they grow up. And yeah, they have to teach them. Yeah. Okay. But when they're left to their own, when it's when left to its own devices, uh, apparently, <laughs> its number one uh, way to spend time was to watch cat videos on YouTube. <laughs> and so I, I don't know. I kind of like that. I kinda unless like they were studying cats, in which case, like I've had to mimic them, which would be bad because they're deadly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but actually, you know, talking about AI and the NSA listening to us all the time. Nice segue. Little segue maybe into the movie we're going to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I know. Okay. So let's do it. Let's, 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 I mean, this is, this is a show called, um, the Arkin brothers talk about movies. So why don't the Arkin brothers that decided to show up today? Yeah. Cause one of them is fancy and busy. Why don't the ones that decided that the show must go on, yeah, uh, go on with the show? Yeah, absolutely. And continue about what the uh, the you know the the modus operandi uh, of the show. Yeah, hey, let's take off with this agenda. Okay, so the movie for this week is uh, Wrong Is Right. Yeah, which is uh, kind of. Uh, appropriate in so many ways well in so many strange ways it stars um and we picked this movie before any news came out about sean connery but it stars sean connery and matthew uh picked this movie 
before uh, he died suddenly, and then we watched the movie after he died. So yeah. it was it's a little very, bittersweet. Bittersweet for sure. Um, it's directed by Richard Brooks of uh, Elmer Gantry and In Cold Blood fame, writer director, early example of a writer director. Um, based on Charles McCary's novel. And it, store, it stars Sean Connery, George Grizzard, Robert Conrad, Catherine Ross, J.D. Spradlin, John Saxon, Henry Silva, Leslie Nielsen, Robert Weber, Hardy Krueger, Dean Stockwell, Ron Moody. I mean, honestly, we've covered a lot of movies that have a big cast in them. This may be like one of the more Titanic groups of people. It's, it's an amazing cast. Um, and I have so stories about two of them. Oh, you do? I don't really have any stories about, I don't have any fancy stories, but I'm looking forward to hearing you. You have the fan, one of the fancy stories that I have, but you might not remember it. You might might be too young to really, might have been too young to really remember it. <clears throat> I think I know you're, who you're talking about. We, uh, had, we had dinner with Ron Moody. Ron Moody, yeah. I, we, I we remember went, a, yeah. a little bit. We went to see him do... Um, Peter Pan. He played Captain Hook in Peter Pan. Yeah. In with um, Lulu, of all people, was playing Peter Pan. Wow. Lulu of uh, To Sir With Love fame. She's oh. in To Sir With Love, and she's the one who sings the song. Okay. Those schoolgirl days of, you know, the To Sir With Love song. Okay. Um, That's a little before my time, but uh, yeah. I'll, you know. But he was hysterical, and then uh, we went with, with mom and dad, and and you and I yeah. went out to dinner with him. After. I remember where we were like, were we in the Highlands or something, or was it, it in London? It was in London. It was okay. Yeah, and he was lo lovely. I remember having fun with him and thinking as a kid that his, the, his Captain Hook was the best, was absolutely oh, the greatest. Yeah, because he played with the audience yeah. a lot. He did he a lot of turning to the audience. And going, yeah. ah! <laughs> if anybody who doesn't know who we're talking about is and they're watching Ron Moody, if you saw The 12 Chairs, which was Mel Brooks' first movie, he's in that. And he's also he also plays Fagin in Oliver, the uh, the musical version of Oliver Twist movie from the 60s. And I believe he won an Oscar. I think he did, that. yeah. It's spectacular but actor. He's more of a... Of a theater person in, in yeah. the UK. So, um, but anyway, he's really cool. Um, I uh, don't know where to begin. Um, well, um, well, the, the amazingness of the, 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 the prescience of this movie, the way it foretells, so many things that came to be. Yeah, I mean, there there are two, I guess there's two prongs of the conversation that we could have. There is the amazing parallels to world, real things that happen afterwards that mm -hmm. are in the movie. Um, and then there's the, uh, there's the car wreck of the movie itself that I think we could also spend some time talking about. There's two different things. And and so we. So you probably, think the movie's a a, a train? A, a just a, a. I got. I I think it's an. Un, I think it's an unadulterated train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see, and I I I kind of love it. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, um, I, I agree that it's 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 it's. I I think of it less as a as a as a train wreck and more like. A bunch of people saying, a bunch of very talented people saying, "Hey, let's play bumper cars for a while." Um, yeah, I, I guess that's fair. I guess that's <laughs> fair. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, come on, Sean Connery doing his song and dance number in the. It's let me just. I'm gonna let, let's phrase it. Let's put it this way. Let's let's just like <laughs> frame it this way. My cat's gonna start screaming in a second. Just vocalizing. Cat's fine. Totally healthy. Happy. Might start screaming like you think something's being murdered up in the no top problem. of the apartment. So, um, 
what do I, 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 I yeah, a, a, a car wreck, a train wreck. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel like um, there's so many things about it mystify, mystifying in certain ways to me. Okay. Okay. What, what I, okay. Here's the easiest way to put it. We want to make, uh, we got an idea for a really crazy, cutting edge, hyper technical spy black comedy spy movie yeah let's get the guy who directed in cold blood <laughs> fair fair um i don't know what I, I i just i i couldn't i couldn't and but then i know richard brooks generates his own material i, I i'm sure of it i know this wasn't a studio job for him you know, this was the second to last movie. He was as famous as he was going to get. And um, thank you, but I won't apologize for them. I just did. I just wanted people to not think that that, that my my cat was in pain. He's just very vocal. Um, but thank you. Um, I like John Saxon. <laughs> yeah, John Saxon's terrific in it. Um. I don't know. I feel like it just, it just, it's, it felt like, uh, 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 you know, Richard Brooks saw Dr. Strangelove and was yeah. like, I'm gonna, I can do better than that. And, and then you're gonna hurt yourself if you try right. to do that. Yeah. That's yeah. what I, that's what I thought. I was game and I was up for it. Um, it was nice to see Connery looking like, you know, this was still Connery times. Yeah. You know, and he's having fun. He's having a good like time. He's having a ball. Yeah, he he often did though. I don't know. He he always looked like he was having a good time, kind of. You know, uh, and um, I think he was oddly cast in a way. The humor, yeah, the humor was not. Uh, so tell me, why did you? What did you love about this movie? Why do I love about this? Yeah, why did you give it a pass? <laughs> <laughs> I agree that it's really bad. But I feel like it's really bad in just a really fun way. Like everybody's just having fun doing campy, crappy work. Okay. Yeah. And, and I've, I've, uh, I've done campy, crappy work. Oh, right? so you're apologizing for your own misdeeds. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think I think Robert Conrad turns in one of the best performances wow. of his career. Okay. And that's, but yeah. see, that's not, that's a low bar. Well, that's it's a very low bar. bar. I mean, is he an actor? I don't know. I don't know what, if, what you can say about it. But he um, delivers one of my favorite lines in the movie. When, 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 um, when George Grizzard says, I'll have to resign. And he says, don't do it, Mr. President. You'll hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> you're you, you're you're dismayed that I enjoyed this movie. I'm a little confused. All right, okay. I think that um, I think that it's a it's a good movie. In it, it's a good it, it's a good movie hiding in there somewhere, and it and it and it was it was so so mishandled by by the director so poorly chosen for his you know for what he does well i'll grant that, you that i will that completely grant you that it kind of took the, a little bit of the fun out of it for me i <clears throat> there was something there was something a little bit to me i don't know like i, I wish they had gone farther into the ridiculous uh -huh. there's, there's a couple of clips i pulled that are examples of what i kind of of the things i did like about it and also think are ridiculous, but I feel like they could have, I feel like they were kidding themselves when they watched the dailies and that they were like, no, this is, this is really cutting it. This is really cutting edge, man. This is going to be, this is, and conceptually, I think it's very cutting edge, but in execution, it's like, it's just, it's a, it's, um, he was well, too, it, it too picks up on all of the political tropes and boogeymen of of that very particular slice of time in American history. Sure, sure. 
Um, and I guess, you know, probably that would be more pleasing to you as it kind of intersects with the kind of the kind of uh, literature you like in a way. I well, mean, I espionage. That when I saw it, it was right then. It was, you know, when this movie came out, the the hostage crisis in Iran, the oil sitting on line on, in, uh, at gas stations, all of that stuff was really fresh in yeah. my memories. Yeah. It was interesting to see uh, a movie that was drawing so much from the headlines in the, of the moment. For sure. And and apparently from what I read, it was, you know, it was pretty well researched in terms of how stuff ran back then. Uh -huh. Maybe I don't know now. So we're gonna give a you know, obviously we're gonna spoil the hell out of this movie because that's oh, yeah. all that's, that's all we do. we do. But I guess we should get used to a bit of a warning for people about it and also say a, a little bit about what the plot is. Yeah, just don't so basically I'll tell everybody, don't watch this show if you haven't watched the movie. Or don't want to, or don't well, want. Yeah, to I mean, if you don't mind it being spoiled, that's fine. Yeah. And we're not covering new stuff, so you know, um, yeah, for the most part. So uh, it's about um, this is a, this is a black satirical comedy, um, or an attempt at that. Let's say <laughs> uh, about a globe trotting um, news journalist like. Uh, impresario, like a like a Dan Rather mixed with Indiana Jones, right? He runs around the globe covering all the biggest topics, and he knows all the, you know, all the politicians, and he's at all the, he's everywhere all the time, and he runs his own camera, which we're gonna freaking talk about, okay? And um, he's like a just an amazing kind of like a James Bond if James Bond were a journalist. You can see why they cast him in the part. Yeah, and the movie starts with him. I guess he's in the Middle East in the beginning. Is that he's in Saudi Arabia in the beginning? He's everywhere at the beginning. But it takes starts in the Middle East, and he's yeah. like meeting all these, um, you know, heads of state down there, and yeah. and um, uh, and and something an espionage begins, and there's a, there's a there's an assassination that he's somehow tied to. And um, gets embroiled in trying to uh, gets embroiled in the operation, kind of of the CIA, but then also is covering it at the same time, running around the world, meeting you know weapons dealers and all kinds of stuff, trying to uncover the plot, which is essentially nuclear devices have been stolen and on the black market. Uh, they're now going to do something bad with them in the United States. That's the whole idea. I think. Am I missing anything? No, no, not really. Um, but it all ends up being kind of a setup by the United States as a reason to go to war, which right. is what kind of freaks me out about watching the movie now, because it seems like it almost predicts George Bush and George W. Bush and uh, Dick Cheney concocting the weapons of mass destruction yeah. uh, scenario in order to go into Iraq. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. To totally calls that. Well, like, one, of the, one of the, the idea one, from this movie. One of the things I thought of, which was interesting, was that it makes us think of that. But I'm sure Richard Brooks was researching it and the novel researched other examples of it that happened earlier in history earlier. where... Right. Yeah. You know, one of the interesting things about reading up, up on the movie was reading the reviews and how a lot of people were like saying not just what you're saying, but saying like, "Oh, it's a work of prophecy and it's an undiscovered thing." And I'm like, "Well, I think the if you're of a certain age, you'd kind of remember like, you know, this stuff was happening. I mean, the '70s we had. I mean, there were there were there were there were, th there were things about." You know, mistrust of the government and paranoia thrillers from the seventies, and yeah, that that were all in scattered around movies. This right. one kind of took them all and put them into one. Put them into, into one, one thing. But the idea of it's it seemed to be a little ahead of the curve on the Fox News and the news yeah. entertainment thing. Yeah, coming ahead of the curve. Yeah, and then you know the first. Um, 
World Trade Center bombing hadn't happened. The first uh, that, World Trade I, I know that freaked me out here. when I when I looked at the timeline of that because that, that was ninety three, right? The, or, the the first, first bombing, yeah, the first yeah. one was ninety three, I think, and then and then of course nine eleven. The fact that no. they, that the end of this movie is them finding the nuclear bombs on top, on top of the World Trade Center. Center. Yeah, it it it's pretty chilling. It's pretty yeah. chilling. Pretty bizarre. Um, and uh, again, I'm just going to be Mr. Cinema and say, like, so what? Um, that doesn't mean it's a good movie. But no, it doesn't it's it. notable. It's definitely notable for, I mean, it's definitely notable for that. Because it's 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 kind of weird. The second half got kind of spooky. Like, yeah. you, you're, you have to keep looking at the date and going, like, really? This was 80, this was 82? Yeah. I think it was 82. The other interesting thing with what's going on with right now is um, uh, a uh, an African-American vice president. It, yes. In the movie. Uh, Female. A Female. woman. A, a, a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Also. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, um, the other person who I met from this is I, I have a George Grizzard story, and George Grizzard plays the president. Okay. And uh, this was... It's not pronounced Grizzard. <laughs> no, okay. no. George Chicken gr chicken Grizzard. I, was, yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Grizzard. Um, in 1990... Summer of 1991... I think so almost 30 years ago I was doing a sag low budget movie up in Elmira, New York, middle of absolutely nowhere. So up there for a couple of weeks and one of the other actors and I who were stuck in the middle of nowhere over a weekend where it's 1130 at night and we're in the empty holiday in yeah. bar drinking. And it's just the two of us and some old man sitting in the corner with a, the Sunday New York Times spread out in front of him on a table. And my friend Michael, my new friend Michael and I are sitting there drinking. And all of a sudden, Michael <laughs> looks at the guy over in the corner and he says, That's George Grizzard. And I looked over and I said, It's, it's, not, it's not George Grizzard. He said, Yeah, it is. It's George Grizzard. I said, It's not George Grizzard. George Grizzard is not sitting in the hotel bar in Elmira, New York at 11.30 on a Saturday night al drinking alone. And Michael says, that's George Grizzard, and I'm going to go over there and I'm going to talk to him. We we're, were both a little tipsy at this point. And he gets up and he walks over to this guy and he says, excuse me, Mr. Grizzard. And the guy looks up and he says, yes. He says, hi, um, my name is you know, Michael Zaposnik, and this is my friend Matthew. We're actors from New York. We're doing a film here in town. Uh, and he and he immediately says, "Oh, sit down, join me." And we end up closing the place. Like we're there till two o'clock in the morning. What was he doing there? He was doing a bus and truck tour of Lend Me a Tenor. Oh no, seriously! He gets to it the next day. That's awesome. So that was that night. We we drank with him that night. We went out for a bite after the show the next day. Two years later, I have a tiny role in a movie shooting down in uh, in uh, Wilmington, Delaware, at the old Carolco Carol Studios, the the ones that she took over from Dino De Laurentiis, where you uh -huh. you have to hold every time a plane takes off because <laughs> it's like an air base, right, right. And every time a plane is taking off, you have to hold. It's where they um, shot Close Encounters, right? I think so. I mean, yeah, it was nuts. Um, and I, the movie had been shooting for about two weeks when I got there. And, and when I got there, they'd take me straight to, to uh, wardrobe. And then they're broken for lunch. And they say, why don't you go over to the canteen for some lunch? Um, and then you'll have the rest of the day off. And I go over to the canteen. And I don't know anybody. They've all been working together. And I sit down with my tray. I'm all alone. And George Grissard comes walking into the canteen. I didn't know that he was in the movie. And he walks in and he looks around and sees me. This is two years later. He sees me and he goes, hey, Matt, how you doing? What are you doing here? And comes over and sits down. I mean, the guy, like a politician's memory, remembered me two years later. And sat down. 
was lovely. A very classy guy, from what I hear. Nice, yeah. nice guy. Yeah, friend of of our friend Elizabeth Wilson's, our dear. Oh yeah, Liz. And I think I think way. I think mom worked with him. I think I do believe she actually I worked with him too. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe mom, if you're listening, you can type yeah. in. Mom is listening. She can type in a comment. And was tell it? Me. It was it? Yeah, I think she did a Broadway show with him. I think. Yeah. Or we could, I could even send her an invite. We could have a mom's corner and she could tell George Grissard stories. She's, well, you know, we have a slot to fill. My God, Adam didn't show yeah, we have Adam a whole didn't thing show didn't up. happen tonight. We've got, we've, yeah, we've got, we got to fill time before commercial. Yeah. So, um, mom, if you're out there and listening and you can jump in, let us know yeah. when you worked with George Grissard. Um, um, okay, look, it's also in a, did you have something else you were going to say about George Grizzard or drinking with him at the, at the hotel bar? <laughs> I want to go to that hotel bar now. That sounds like exactly where I'd like to spend election night, like oh, in a, oh. in a, in some completely nondescript hotel bar that's empty yeah. except for George Grizzard. And then just I'd actually like to kind of spend the rest of my life in a nondescript hotel bar. I think I feel, that's the I'm sickest person, thing I've ever heard. I'm a person who feels <laughs> most at home in a nondescript uh -huh. bar. Yeah. It, you, well, you usually, you know, if you're there, you're usually employed. There's usually a job. Yeah. There's no other reason to be in a yeah. bar in the middle of nowhere. You might be at a at a at a wedding that you had to travel to right. that you didn't want to go to. In the we've first we've had times in you know Belgrade. Yeah. We had a great oh yeah, Belgrade. Uh, actually, they're all great Belgrade. times. Right? It usually means you've made a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> um, can we talk about why filmmakers, people that work with camera equipment and make movies, allowed Sean Connery, one of our greatest stars on the planet at the time, to pretend to operate a movie camera that way? What, what do you think was behind that? Is that not how you operate a camera, a news camera? No, it's not how you do that. Uh, you don't run around and point at it. Well, you do essentially do that, but the way that he did it was was pretty damn funny. You also don't drop it into the sand on several occasions, or dump it into the back of a trunk, uh, or record interviews without a microphone. I don't know how that's done. You're such a stickler. I I, I am. I feel like I feel <laughs> you know. I, but I, I I think it, to 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 be serious for a second. I think my problem with the movie is that it's lazy, and it's not enough that it's campy. I don't feel that. They, I don't feel the people involved were trying their hardest to make to make the best film that they could. I felt I, it was. I would agree with that. Lazy, and it wasn't lazy in a funny Marx Brothers kind of way. Right. It made it less funny because it was, you know, I think because they were almost like, I felt like he was challenging Dr. Strangelove. Uh-huh. I felt like he was challenging it. I'm feeling so bad for enjoying this movie now. Okay. If we're going to get sad no. and, and yeah. sulky about it, then we should just say how much we like each other. <laughs> um. All right, I'm, I'm going to throw out things that I like. Defend it. Tell me why I'm wrong. No, I'm not going to defend it. What I want to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw out things that I like, and I think every single thing that I throw out that I like, I think you will be able to legitimately <laughs> shoot down. Except and for like the fact that <laughs> I can't they, shoot it down if you like it. It's just what you like, and then no, but you can shoot it down. Okay, I love. Okay, I love the one little nod to the James Bond movies. Where the guy, <clears throat> where the guy has the pen that that sprays the thing that kills the rat, and 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 uh, Bond, uh, Bond, Sean Connery picks up the pen after he realizes that it's a weapon that you can go tss, tss, with the uh -huh. pen and kill somebody, and he looks at it and he goes, uh, "What is the line?" He says, "Um, he, he says something like, uh, oh, I wrote it down somewhere. Favorite lines." Uh, favorite line. Oh, he just looks at it and he goes, "That's a hell of a pen." And it was it was like straight out of the Bond movies when Q is showing him the new 
the news. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. He also so right right before then he also said your rat is dead. <laughs> your rat is dead. And he didn't say why did you bring a rat into the president's room. <laughs> okay, so we should we should get that clip, and I can play it right up there with with uh, Bring me the, the grub grub worms. Me the grub worms. Yes, the rat is dead. The rat is dead. Um, okay, I like um, worst John Connery ever. Says, by the way, sorry everybody. They're talking about. Uh, he says he, somebody says he bought the bombs, and Sean Connery says he who. Right or or whoever I <laughs> <laughs> was like okay that that was, you were you were easy you were worried about the election I think that's what happened you were worried and you needed some some simple pacific pacifying elements in your movie um, um yeah okay. uh I what else did you like um I uh I love. Well, we talked about like all of the themes of the late seventies that it was picking up on, and yeah. the, the fact that for absolutely no reason, you, you'll notice in so many of these movies, the the um, the uh, terrorist number two is a is a blonde female. <laughs> like you can't have you can't have a cadre of terrible terrorists without one of them being a very attractive blonde female. And um, the interesting thing about this was that she was American. She wasn't German. They're right, usually they German. Are, they are. Yeah, it's true. That's a usual. But, you know, it's sort of the Bader mine It's a, a nod of the hat to the Bader meinhof gang and, and uh, all that. Okay. Um, let me see. I, my list of things that I loved is, is, is short. <laughs> Shorter so, than you thought. I love, I love the fact that the terrorist brings a bottle of nitric acid to inject into the light bulb to, to you know, screw in and have it be the thing that blows up. And that the bottle of nitric acid that the terrorist brings has um, masking tape on it and the words nitric acid written in Sharpie on the masking tape. <laughs> These are things you loved, like legitimately loved about the movie. No, I, I just you just um, like them. Um, I love that the <clears throat> the um the the scene where um Hardy Krueger, uh, Hardy no Kr Hardy Krueger, Hardy Krueger, uh, my favorite. He's my favorite thing in the movie. He's I terrific, think. and yeah. he gets blown up, and he's on fire, and <laughs> when he's on fire, for some reason they have the. Uh, the uh, V, the like, like a mask, some huge mask on him. Yeah, that you really see. You uh, you see in vivid close up the the giant fire retardant mask. face shield that the stuntman <laughs> yeah. is wearing because um, he runs into a close up and they kept it in the movie. <laughs> yeah. That's why and what yeah. happened. I love that. <laughs> uh, I, it did give me one good jump scare. In the warehouse, when the, yeah, that was scary until it you a scene scare? where he started dancing with the dangling body for about four minutes, and you're like, "Are you?" <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, There's other things I liked. Um, what about the whole um, uh, sequence of the? Of uh, the bombing of New York, what would happen if New York was bombed? That looked I, like it was out of a Godzilla. I know. Not, like no, there, no Godzilla movie is that bad. There isn't one that is that would stoop to the level of effects that are in this movie. I mean, there's a whole conversation about. I mean, WTF happened with the production on design and the effects on this film. Um. It wasn't. It, I think okay. I'm going to have to raise a white flag of the white flag of surrender <laughs> on this one. I mean, I, 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 I felt honestly. I feel like I feel like uh, 
like the magic Christian made more sense. <laughs> like I understood more of why they did the thing. Okay, can we just play a clip? I think talk let's about another clip. movie. Let's just talk no, about. We have movie. to play a clip. Let's play. <laughs> let's oh. play a clip of reason number one that I love this movie. This is something I legitimately love, but I wish there was more of this in it. And it's clip number one. Okay, here we go. Clip number one. That's brilliant storytelling. It's unhinged. It's so, it's so ridiculous. It's literally like that was like Team America to me. That section was like watching Team America. It's so funny and ridiculous. And it looks, it's not, it, okay, it looks like an episode of, of Simon and Simon. It looks like an episode of The Incredible Hulk. And the, the, the Hulk directed it. <laughs> because it's just the backlot stuff. You can see like the backlot. They're on the wherever, like the universal backlot for some of this stuff. And you can see like struts and things from around the corner of sets. I, I, it, it is the sloppiest thing ever, ever, ever. Um, but it gets it, it, it does have JD Spradlin saying, uh, his line again from Apocalypse Now, which is a good notable. Mo that's actually pretty notable. Which he's, one? He's like, I've heard people say, you know, uh, slip on a banana peel. I've heard them say, smack him in the face with a fish. I've heard him say, <laughs> oh, you know, right. trip him off his tricycle. <laughs> I've heard him say, you know, eradicate with extreme prejudice. But uh, you know, right. and he drops the line. But uh, is it a GD Spradlin? JD Spradlin. Did I say JD? Yeah, that's JD. Say you're mixing him up with JD. Salinger. That's what JD Salinger said. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I'm very confused. Um, I. Oh. You want me to give you a list of things that I loved as well? Yes, please. Because I love it's humiliating. I love the the uh, the wonderful satellites animated in the beginning of the movie yes. that were two D cutouts flying around. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> Those are fantastic. Um. I uh, I what love the stunt people blowing up when they jump off the cars. Uh, see, you know, I... fireworks <laughs> like <laughs> like the uh, sparklers. There were, it, sparklers go off. Oh yeah, I've never I've never been a mad bomber in my life. It's just not something I've ever done or been into. Um, don't know a lot about it, but I would imagine if you were to strap bombs to yourself and try to do something about that uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't leap into midair like a dancer and explode <laughs> away from anybody that you would you would try to get closer to people instead of diving away from them and explode in midair in the air yeah um the fact that this movie ends with parachuting lady terrorists over the white house parachuting and just blowing themselves up in midair yeah I thought was pretty great in a and like in a you, I can't believe this. You know what this movie reminded me of? It reminded me of you ever see Skidoo? 
No. Otto Preminger's like final film. I think it was Preminger, where he was trying to get like crazy and with it with the kids and yeah. do a movie that the kids would like. And in this movie, among other things, Jackie Gleason drops acid in prison and has a 20 minute hallucination. <laughs> and that also was happening at the time. That kind of stuff was going on. <laughs> and it was still like, what did you, what, what happened? Okay. So, all right. We haven't talked about Jennifer Jason Lee. No, right? That was that was crazy. No, that was crazy. Very much. That was actually a pretty funny moment from the movie. Um, there's a lot of other movies in here. Like there's films that came before. I was trying to think of how um, original it really was, you know, because it's so there's so many things in it that you're like, wow, I can't believe they did this in 82 or whatever. Right. So many movies came after it that I think were inspired somewhat by it, even though this movie was a big flop. It, it really was a, a disaster. Uh, did you know that? Like, they actually had to change the name when it went to, to Canada because they were like, nobody wants to see this. They'll, they'll know it's this movie. So we have to change it with the, with the man with the, with the lens, with the crazy lens or something. <laughs> I'm so... I'm so embarrassed that I picked this movie. You had no we reason to expect it. that this um, was going to be like this. But then we, um, you know, so we had like Wag the Dog and Bob Roberts and Dave and In the Loop and, you know, even Team America, Primary Colors. Those were all movies that I think probably saw these reference this movie a little bit. But it also came after The Candidate, Network, Strange Love, Being There, Bananas, and the Russians are coming, among others. So it wasn't as like it wasn't as groundbreaking as I think it thought it was. As it was, it was. Right. But I don't any. I don't want to keep punching at it because you. you I. I don't want to make you feel bad. That's, what about what about when Sean Connery takes his two payoff at the end? Best you know? moment. Best really best moment of the movie. And I felt like, why guy, why were you, why did you wait until the last frame to 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 go like to be a little bit crazy? Like, like why why didn't you do more of that like throughout this movie? Throughout the whole movie. Because some of it was like ready for air it was like airplane. Some of it was that level of like, right. are you are you kidding me? I mean, that sequence that I showed you with Hardy Kruger in the car that we that was like that well, was like the sequence you wanted to show also, right? Yeah, this is it. This has got Connery in it. So it's got some Connery moves and it's also some amazing action stunt work and some great, great explosion effects. Why do I think being sarcastic? It's also an example of how you t treat a movie camera. Okay, here we go. He's dead. This man's dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Oh my god. And that reminds me of the action sequences in Catch 22 <laughs> when they're blowing up the bay. Oh. No. It was like the Incredible Hulk. All right, I am never picking a movie again. Oh, no, uh, you. No. One of us has to pick it. You didn't. Just, you didn't. You know. What do you know? You saw it when it came out. You haven't <laughs> seen it since then. That's true. I haven't seen it since then. You were what six? When? How old were you when this movie came out? In 1982. Yeah, I was four. Okay, so why were you supposed to know? Want to? Want to see? Can I swear on this? Yeah. Want to hear some things that I that I wrote down? Yeah, no, I was I was 22 when this movie came out. All right, maybe you should have known a little better. I, I don't know. Known a little better. I wrote down who the fuck shot this, <laughs> who the fuck art directed? Question mark. <laughs> who? 
So I, it, a lot of WTFs. Yeah, for uh, a, f a few of those, yeah. Did you honestly think there were, I mean, I, I, I wanted to laugh. Maybe I was in a, maybe I honestly was in a bit of a funky head because of the election and a little stressed out. Uh-huh. And um, maybe I wasn't uh, in as jovial a mood as I could have been. So maybe in another, watching the movie in a different spirit, I might have had more laughs and more fun with it. Um, because I kept on seeing things like, wow, I should really, this is ridiculous. And I should think this is ridiculous and fun. But I kept on thinking of In Cold Blood and going, uh, wow, why did he make this movie? Yeah, I wasn't when I saw it. I think also I was probably in my freshman, my first year of law school. Mm. So anything was entertaining. Sure, and stuff with you know somewhat legitimate international ideas, and it w wasn't just you know it's a cut above James Bond in, in the sense that James Bond is just you know. It was just like, he's got to get a device and there's nothing more complicated going on. It's just like, get the bad guy. Yeah. But in this, there was actual research into some of the politics of it, which I guess is made it different. You know, at least they were trying something different, man. They really were. Um, but General Wombat's not a name for anybody in this movie. That was weird that everybody else has a legitimate name. Yeah, and he was General Wombat. And then it's General Wombat. I didn't I didn't the, did, I, he, he was from from like Doctor Strange Love, that yeah, character. Very much so. Um you know, I I love Catherine Ross. Love to see her. Yeah. Um but why, you know, sh she was gone in like 5 minutes. Yeah. So sure. Uh, that was that was sad because I wanted to see more of her. Um, Can we and, talk though a little bit about Henry Silva? <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Ron Moody and Henry Silva here are playing parts that today is not okay. I no. mean, you know, no, not okay. No, but Henry Silva is one of the greats. Yeah. I mean he he is like that guy took that face and and turned it into a career. He did. Cuz he looks like you can't look at him without thinking there's something really wrong going on here. He has one of those faces like, you know, like um Jack Palance um yeah. uh there's a couple of other people. It's true. He's also um he was also kind of always didn't he always play um like very di different nationalities and yes. people from like he he would play he's in the Manchurian candidate, right? Yeah. yeah because, he, like, he just he looks I wonder what I don't know what his nationality is. I think he's Italian. Um I I'm going to look him up right now. <laughs> Because he looks so uh, indeterminate. Uh, he looks like he could be like uh, doesn't he? yeah. Like I think, he's from I think he's from Hoboken. I don't know. It's, oh, this is interesting. Sicilian and Spanish descent. Because I felt I, there are times where I thought he looks sort of Filipino. Um, like for instance, look, well, look, I think that's look, what other people thought at the time too. So yeah, I mean, like for instance, look at this. Look at this photograph of him. Um. Uh. Where where is it? Where the heck is it? Here, just uh, over here. <laughs> Do you, is is that coming up? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, I mean, I can see why at the time they thought he could. 
I play somebody in the Manchurian Candidate who was Asian, but I don't. I mean, but he looks Italian. I mean, he kind of looks Italian to me. He looks like uh, he kind of looks like uh, you know, um, Fist of Fury. He's also a little bit like uh, there's another face like that, Lee Van Cleef. Um, and I'm suddenly alone by myself, uh, recording live on YouTube, which is a strange experience. My brother left. Um, I said, Lee Van Cleef and he, he took off. He's no longer here. I'm back. Which is very the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> this has been, this has been a very long day. I was up all night watching the return. I went to bed thinking things mm. were horrible. I woke up at, I told you, I woke up at four o'clock in the morning, put yeah. CNN on my phone, put my earpiece in and went back to sleep and <laughs> lay there listening to, to you know, yeah. and then going, oh, there's another yeah, breaking thing. <laughs> breaking news thing happening. <laughs> um, there, there's no excuse for what just happened, uh, leaving me alone on the air, but I thank you for, for trying. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know, sometimes we disagree about these films, and I, uh, you know, I'm I'm tough on stuff. What can I say? I'm no, tough. you're you're very smart about these things. I am, uh, I, uh, and I can be kind of, and I I will also admit to 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 sometimes really liking really crappy things. <laughs> Oh, but I can too. I, I can too. I think this didn't hit this. This. I mean, but I think I have. Think we have to be critical of even the crappy things. Yeah. And, and are I, they are I, they crappy in the ways that are the most pleasing? No. And, uh, you know. No. no this <laughs> this could have been so much crappier and so much funnier by being crappy. No, this movie is a piece of crap. Um, I there's another thing we have to talk about, which isn't related to this movie, but um. You know, uh, in in thinking about what we're going to watch next week, yeah, uh, I I came up with a list of things that we could watch next week. Um, uh, there was somebody who wasn't able to join us tonight, who who you've referred to as Primo. You know, our our older brother. Yeah. Somebody couldn't didn't um, had other things to do. Had to bigger. So I thought more one thing to we work could out. do is if he does when he doesn't join us. Yeah. Since then, he's not here to help us pick what he doesn't meet us at half hour. People want to know. We decide at half hour when we're getting together before the show what we're um, going to see. What we're going to see the next week. And I think from now on, when he doesn't meet us at half hour, we should like say, okay, next week we're going to watch Full Moon High again. But like every time he can't make yeah, it on the show, we're going to watch again. Full Moon High and talk about a different aspect of it, like a deep dive, like it would be like the equivalent of a multi-part podcast deep dive into Over and high or under the rainbow which honestly i would love to see again so much or baby blue marine um is that a movie that he's not proud of that he was in i don't i don't i don't know if he's not proud he was in he actually he's in it with bruno kirby i, I believe think that might where be where they, they met. met i think that is what where they met yeah um or yeah. Lake Placid or Halloween H two O. Both of those are fine entertainments. Oh yeah, okay. and so is Full Moon High. As it, you know, it it also stars uh, another uh, brother of yours. I um, as well. You know, I, I and a father I, and a father that you have father you were very fond of as well. Huh? Yeah, I wasn't in it. Well, you know, I, you weren't into horror movies at the time. I know, and I went off to law school and did all that. You were being. I was, you were I was trying to be. Own, a, I was in my own horror movie. You were in your own horror movie. The horror movie of my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. Uh, I you know I've never seen that movie. You've never seen Full Moon High. I've never seen Full Moon High. Full Moon High is, um, you know, I, I that now that's a movie I really love. I love Full Moon High. Full Moon High is kind of great, and I, I, I get the feeling that Adam. It's probably a little embarrassed about it, as okay. probably anybody that starts their career early on with a werewolf movie might be a little sensitive about it. But I think it's really 
kind of a great piece of film history in a way because Larry Cohen, who directed it, is such a he, he's such an iconic film hero to a lot of people that being in one of his movies to me is is kind of like almost being in an Orson Welles movie. Isn't Ed McMahon in it also? Yes. And he's actually pretty damn funny in it. Really? He plays Adam's dad. Wow. Yeah. It's 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 legitimately got funny things in it, and it's legitimately a really cheesy B movie. All right. I'm gonna have to um have to watch it. Uh, I, I I I if he if he ever watches this episode or whatever, I honestly hope he does see it one day and kind of like enjoy it because there's a lot there to love. Um, but um, but I think we should whatever we watch should be a Robert Conrad movie. Well, clearly, <laughs> I want to see more of this guy's work. More? Have you not seen Robert Conrad before? No, I mean I I was a fan of the original uh, Wild Wild West as a kid. Yeah. Yeah, but I, you know, so but that's all I know. I'm that he was pretty cool in that show, right? What about Baba Black Sheep? I wasn't into it as a kid. He, he played Pappy was, Boyington. Uh, I was too that was I was too young for World War II stuff at that point. Oh, okay. And James Whitmore Jr. is uh was in that, I believe, who's now a big direct TV director. Oh, really? I, I this I don't know. Um, uh, so no, but next week, um we decided on uh, a really good movie this time. Like, this is good. Yeah, it is. Here's what I think. I think that this is going to be the, the ridiculous movie that actually makes us both very happy, like both of us really happy, or maybe just me and you'll hate it. Like I'm, this could, I'm this could be, to be upset that they did a Gregory Hines movie and didn't work a dance number into it. Yeah, well, it's one of the many criminal aspects of it. Um, but I think it's going to be, you know, I, right at this point for me, in the next few weeks, having like ridiculous movies that that I don't have to take my life seriously and think about anything really would be good. Right. Okay. So just so we don't keep people in suspense, next week's movie is Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder starring Roy Scheider. And it is Gregory Hines, right? I wasn't making that up. I think he's in that movie. And he yeah. is partner in the in the helicopter. I, I believe so. Let me look quickly look that up. So I know. It's a John Batham movie, I believe. Oh my who i'm on the faculty with so you know there you go oh 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 fantastic okay so john batham uh written by dan o'bannon and he's don a lovely, lovely man. dan o'bannon no uh john batham teaches it teaches at dodge well don, john batham did some really really cool stuff um for those of you who don't know john batham's work Dude did Saturday Night Fever and War Games, among other really cool things. Um, he was a big director when I was in high school, like in the eighties. And do you um, know? Do you know who his sister is? Um, no. Mary Batham. Okay. Who played Scout in To Kill? No. I believe. Wow. I believe I'm I'm gonna double check myself on that and make sure I'm right, but that's fantastic. I hope I'm right because I've said it I've said it before. Um so this is this is gonna be dope. I'm looking at other stuff that you did too. Uh Nick of Time, Drop Zone, Bird on a Wire, Stakeout, Short Short Circuit. He did short circuit. Oh my god. Yeah, she's his younger sister. Oh, okay. Okay. Please. D he Okay. He, he directed one of my favorite versions of Dracula. Like he, he did, he did the, the, the one from 79 with Frank Langella in it. Oh yeah. And I'm not sure that I think Frank Langella is the best Dracula that was ever on screen. That's not what I'm saying, but this I movie, love, I remember loving that movie. This movie is Fantastic. And it Nell, is so, um, isn't it him and Nell? Uh, 
Yes. Uh, what's her name? Um, Kate Nelligan. Kate Nelligan. Yeah. No, Kate again. Uh, Olivier's in it. Donald Pleasance is in it. He's fantastic. Um, there's a great cast, real English cast for the most part. And it's got some of the best design uh, in, a, in a film of that period. It's gorgeous. I remember loving that movie. We should watch that one sometime. Well, I love that movie. I would watch that in a heartbeat. Would you rather do that than than Blue Thunder? No, let's do Blue Thunder and hold that one in reserve. Okay. Um, I mean, I there's so many mood to watch some things get blown up next week. One of the other cool things about the movie is that it's, um, you know, it's shot by by one of the great DPs as well, this guy Gilbert Taylor, who did Star Wars and The Omen and. Um, I mean, he—that's it's—it's a tremendous movie. Blue Thunder um, is a sci-fi movie that, judging from when it came out, is going to be on maybe on the campy side. I don't know. I haven't seen it since it came out. I don't remember. I remember being like, "Oh, cool helicopters." That's kind of yeah. what I remember. Yeah, I remember it when it came. I went. I looked forward to seeing that when it came out. All right, so that's I, that's yeah. what we will watch next week. Excellent. A little. A little. Light fair in the midst Yay! of crazy, crazy times, and maybe, maybe Mister Fancy will be able to join us. And well, uh, I hope so. I mean, you know, I because if you when you ditch me like that, and it's just me, <laughs> it's the show changes. It gets really bad, really fast. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to watching this, like fast forwarding to that moment. <laughs> I'm it's super hot right now. I was terrified. It reminds me, I was doing a show. Um, I was doing a production of A Thousand Clowns um, at a little theater in New Jersey years and years ago, early on in my career. And there was this young 11-year-old kid playing the young 11-year-old kid in the show. Yeah. And um, the beginning of the play is uh, Murray's getting, I think the character's name is Murray, he's getting out of bed and the, the apartment is a mess and I had to just pick up pieces of clothing from huge piles of clothing and crap all over stage to get myself dressed in the morning. So there was tons of clothing and crap all over the stage, but my costume pieces had to be tucked in amongst them all over the stage. And one evening the show starts and he comes in and wakes me up off my bed and and I get up and walk over to where my sh pants and sh is are supposed are supposed to be, and they're not there. And then I walk over to where my shirt is supposed to be, and it's not that none of my costume is there. And I can't take other stuff because it's just random crap. It might not fit me, or I don't know what. It's just stuff they threw out on yeah. stage to me. So oh, no. I realized that they forgot to set my costume before the show started, and. The, the little kid is supposed to say, you know, do you want me to read to you from the, you know, the day's headlines or whatever? Because he's going to go, we're going to, he's going to tell me about the day's news. And he says, you want me to read you the day's news? And I turn to him and I go, I say, yeah, um, that would be great. But I think I left my clothes in the laundry. I'll be right back. And I walk off stage, leaving this 11 year old kid. Alone on stage with a new. Oh, no, no, you didn't. I did. I just walked off stage because I, like I had to go get my clothes. That was like a that was like a WC Fields thing to do. <laughs> it's amazing. You just left a child alone. You're like, hey, he's see. Like, he's, he you know what to do. Times. He's like, what? Are you? Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, I don't even think I said that. I, I think I said, yeah, I do want to hear about that, but I'll be right back. And I just left. And when I walked back in with my clothes, he's he's like looking at me and I said, I left these in the laundry. <laughs> that is fantastic. Uh, that was fun. Yeah, good <laughs> times. Good times. Uh, uh, so, all right. I guess uh, we, uh, I guess we covered this movie. We uh, there's plenty more that we could say, but I don't know if you want to hear any more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just um so humiliated. <laughs> this isn't a, it's not a competition to pick a great movie. 
that's not what this is about, right? I mean, you don't have to feel what bad. What about the phones, the phones in the White House? They're all, aren't all phones at the White House glo metallic globe phones? <laughs> I thought those were pretty special. Those are standard issue. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they have in the White House. Um, the, it, it, the, this art direction was was pretty remarkable. You didn't think so? You didn't feel like they maybe uh, <laughs> give up the game on the art direction a little bit? <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hey. thank you so much for joining us. Um, Monday on Creative Conversations, my guest is going to be Mr. George Went. So tune in for that Monday at 8 o'clock. Uh, That'll be fun. 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. And uh, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends about the show, uh, keep the lights on for us, like as if we get paid any money for this at all. Well, yeah. Um, and uh, don't forget to have voted. Okay, don't it's very forget, important. Don't yeah. Don't forget to have voted yesterday. Yeah. Um, and remember, remember uh, not to forget to do that. Yeah. And we'll see you next week on Monday. Yeah, on on Wednesday. Yeah, and maybe or, uh, maybe Bruce they'll Trump. be the full company next week. That full would be nice, and yeah. maybe a new president, and maybe the first female vice president of the United States. That maybe. would be so incredibly great. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.